Our reader is Brenda Gorl. Good morning. The psalm reading is from the 15th chapter, and we will read the verses responsibly. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Lord, they do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. Do they take bribes against the innocent? Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. This morning's second reading is from the first chapter of Colossians, verses 15 through 28. Christ Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he, may, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you, who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshy body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith, without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my suffering for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, this is the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Here ends the second reading. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 38th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Now as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you all. As you got busy like Martha to get here, and now, may you rest here, like Mary, at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Last week and this week's message weave together in the Bible under the theme of love. Love. 
Last week was how to love the neighbor as a Samaritan drew near to the Jew who was half beaten in the ditch and half dead. And this week it's how to love God, how to love Jesus as the one who comes as a special guest. Both stories are under the lawyer's decree of the greatest law that is on the topic of how to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength and with all of your heart and with all of your mind and then to love your neighbor as yourself. It is under this umbrella, loving God and then loving neighbor. Today again, loving God, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha and Mary have equally important roles as they live out their love languages. The five love languages are in your bulletin for today, and uh, you don't need to look those up now, but just for reference, as you get curious about these, perhaps after the message. Martha, with her acts of service, and Mary, with quality time. The issue for today, though, with Martha becomes the word distraction. And distraction in the Greek is peri speomai, which peri means from around, P-E-R-I, like perimeter, from around. And then speomai means to be pulled, to pull, to be pulled. And so here what the word distracted means is to be pulled from around in many different directions. This is what the key word is in today's gospel story, to be pulled around in many directions for Martha. I feel like I'm cutting in and out on the sound. Am I okay? Can you hear me in the back okay? Okay. So what are the opposing forces that pull upon Martha? What are the opposing forces, what are the distractions that come or pull at us in our lives? How many of you have ever moved? Can I see a raise of hands? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you have ever tried to sell your home with children living in your home? <laughs> yeah, fun times. Shoes off. We just cleaned the carpets. Uh, let's see, don't spill. We just clean those floors. Clean up your clothes. It's got to be tidy around here. Recall those times getting your house ready for sale. Cleanliness is key. And you have to be ready. Because any day, that special guest could arrive. Welcome to Martha's world. The day has arrived. The day has arrived. The special guest is here. And that special guest is Jesus. Martha is at the door and warmly welcomes Jesus into her home. Okay, now this is for those of you who clean. Rather, I mean, for those of you who go on cleaning fits, if you know what I mean. It's kind of hard to stop once you get going, right? You know what I mean? You start and you keep going and you keep cleaning and you keep cleaning and then once you stop, it's, it's hard to stop because you start seeing spots that you missed when the guest arrives. There's dirt and there's dust and you sure hope that someone doesn't see that really obvious spot that you missed over there and then you're like, darn it, I'm don't, I'm distracted right now, and I don't mean to be, but I'm really distracted by those dirt and dust spots I missed over there. Welcome to Martha's world. I just borrowed a power washer from my mother-in-law the other day to clean my garage doors, uh, to clean the dirty, there had been basketball, volleyball, soccer ball, fossilized imprints in uh, the white garage doors at our, at our house there. And so I told my mother-in-law, I said, it'll be a half hour tops. I'll just spray that right off and it'll be done. 
Three hours later, yes, I returned it. After doing the deck chairs, the deck, the patio, the gutters, and the siding. For me, I don't know about you, but cleaning is sort of an ironic sort of task. Because for me, it's hard for me to start cleaning, but it's also really hard for me to stop cleaning. Anybody else out there like that? A little bashful to raise the hand on that one? Martha, we know your world. We feel your pain, girl. Yes, Martha, you have gotten a bad rap in the past. But today we uplift your love language of service. Service is good. Martha is not bad. And so we thank Martha this day for her hospitality and her love in getting things ready for this special guest. The beef today, or the point of distinction, comes not in her form of service, but rather, the focus is, she loses focus on whom the guest is for, and that is Jesus. Martha is pulled in every direction. Her heart rate is just flying like 150 beats a minute. She was getting some serious cardio in, and ding dong, Jesus, the, the, the doorbell, there's not a doorbell in those times, but you, you know what I'm saying? There's a knock at the door, Jesus is there, and Martha's pace never ever slows down. She is in cleaning mode, and she is sweating the small stuff. She's doing the dishes, she's cleaning on the kitchen, she's making sure everything is done right. She is doing the traditional, customary women's duties of the day. Now contrasting with Mary, her heart rate, was barely 60 beats per minute. She's sitting restfully at Jesus' feet, passively hearing Jesus speak. Mary is in chill mode, resting in the word that is coming to her from Jesus. Just in this one act, Mary becomes a model for women and discipleship. This is completely unexpected and out of the ordinary. Mary's simple act here was countercultural and radical for Jewish women at this time. Her simple act of kneeling at Jesus' feet and worshiping. Regardless of societal norms, Jesus approves he applauds and announces the depth of her devotion. This is a strong example for women and full participation in every aspect of church life for women. The first preachers of the good news after Easter, that celebrating and spreading the Easter news were women. And here, hospitality, service, and discipleship are all hallmarks of these women here that are uplifted. And so I like to think of Mary and Martha like M&Ms, right? They're sweet, they're colorful. Mary and Martha. Both Mary and Martha are examples of women in the Bible and examples for all of us to follow by their example. And so for the gospel good news today, the gospel pulls us this day, not as a distraction. The gospel pulls us as disciples to love Jesus. How do we do this? With the love language of service, preparing and working for the special guest, and being agents of hospitality for the special guest in our lives. For Martha, with her steadfast energy to carry out the work that needs to be done, she carried out this love language of service. Without Martha here in this, service, in this story, it wouldn't be complete because there would be no place that would be fit for this special guest. And so the truth is, is that 
all of us can be a sweet mix of both Mary and Martha at the same time. And like M&M's, we too can be a bit nutty. And so also with Martha, let us serve with Mary's love language of quality time by sitting at the feet of Jesus with undistracted minds and resting heart rates. For that's what a sanctuary is for us all. A place where we can go from that busy world out there and come and rest and lower our heart rates and sit here at the feet of Jesus. Jesus is not only our special guest, Jesus is our special host who welcomes us to his home, our church, this church, and as host, he welcomes us to a meal, a meal that he gave his life for. He loves us with widespread arms, much like a, a little one running full speed into the arms of either grandma or grandpa or both at the same time, a beautiful image. The gospel pulls us away to a different time and place, to the heart of the cross where God's story and our story converge. And this makes for a special time, a holy time, a sacred time set apart for relationship with God and with one another. And so with open, and slow beating hearts, we welcome our Lord Jesus into the living rooms of our lives, focused on face-to-face -face encounters with our Lord as we ponder and we reflect and we open up our hearts in his word to hear what he has to say with us as his gospel story meets our story. This is how Jesus comes to us. Jesus comes to us each and every day. But we ask that we have the ability to let down our busy lives and come and enter that sacred space where Jesus Christ our Lord can come and be our special guest and speak a word of peace, and love, and hope, and salvation to us like Mary who sit at his feet. For he is our special guest. Amen.